everybody. Back again very soon. It was less than six months this time. Um, my lovely cousin asked me to do a video about water slides today. Water slide paper is really, really easy to work with. It's, it makes, it comes with really, really good results. I'm gonna show you how to do a full wrap on a cup today. Um, but first I had to show you my mom's adorable, adorable baby, Lily. She's in Newfoundland. She's almost 11 weeks old. We love her. My mom I had to take a trip, I so I'm dog sitting this weekend. So my house is a zoo, it's totally fine. So I'm gonna let her go back to playing with the corgis and I'll be back. Okay, so the things that you need for a water slide cup. Of course, again, the cup. Um, we're gonna do this style today. I get these ones at Michael's. I think you can get them online for a lot cheaper, but I just saw them at Michael's and thought they were cute. When they very first got the cups and they were only $5, so I picked up a couple. This one needs clean. Please don't look at it, it's dirty. I wash all my cups before I use them, don't worry. So, then of course, your primer. Prime your cup, get it all ready, la la la. You need this for the water slide paper. Now, I actually prefer the matte clear, but I'm out of it and I only have the big truck because sometimes I bring it home from work and it's kind of hard to drive that, you know, run down to Walmart or the hardware store and get it. Um, <laughs> so gloss is fine if that's what you have on hand. It works just as well. I just prefer the matte because you can see when it dries a little better, but personal preference. So then you need the water slide paper. I use the Hayes Paper Company, the water slide decal paper, transparent. Now this is the clear stuff. There is also a white that you can put on dark backgrounds. I just have the clear and you're gonna need to put it on a light background. So keep in mind it is clear. So if you have like a light blue background, anything that was supposed to be white on the image will come out as a light blue, whatever the background color is. You can put it on top of glitter. It looks really cool on glitter because you can still see the sparkle through it. It's pretty neat stuff. It comes with these really, really great simple instructions. You print whatever picture you want. Then you take the paper, obviously take it to a well ventilated area, preferably outside. We're gonna spray it, let it dry, spray it, let it dry, spray it, let it dry. Needs three coats of the sealer. Then you can cut it out. Um, we're actually not gonna cut it out. We're gonna print it a little bit big and wrap the cup today. You'll see when we get there. Then you put it in water for 30 to 60 seconds and the clear part actually slides off onto the cup and it makes it wrap so nicely and it just molds to the cup. It, they're really cool. So I did this one with, I did a really bad job of the joining up part. This was one of the first wraps I did with a water slide and it's it's just for my own personal use. So um, I like to do poor paintings and I wanted a poor painting on a cup. You can actually do dirty pours directly onto a cup. But whenever I tried them, I didn't get these cool cells in here. And that's what my favorite part of the oil, or the oil, excuse me, <laughs> the water, the pour painting is, is the cells. I'm sorry, Lily is being quite obnoxious. But you can also do other things. You can do camouflage backgrounds, um, pictures. Uh, I'll try and splice in a picture of a cup I did for my sister for Christmas with her horse on it. So today, I want to do another water slide, or a new, another pour painting. This is one I had done quite a while ago. I don't do them as much as I used to, but they're still, they're really fun. And if you want to get into pour painting, that that's like a whole giant rabbit hole that you can, um, Excuse me, I need to pause for a minute 
Anyway, pour paintings. You can YouTube them. There are so many really, really great tutorials on it. I'm not going to get into that because I have all of this other stuff going on. So today I will not be doing a pour painting tutorial, <laughs> but they're easy enough to get into. They do take a little bit of practice, um, you know, color theory, things like that. But anyway, so we're going to get started after I take care of Lily for a minute. Be right back. Hopefully the dogs are occupied. So I had to switch over to my phone because I need my iPad, which I generally film on to scan the picture. I'm using an Epson series printer. It is an inkjet printer, not a laser printer. Um, it's also got the scanner built into it. This is the Epson print app. So we're just gonna click on scan a picture. Okay, then we come over here. Please excuse the mess. We live here. It's not a museum. Oh, wait. There we go. So what I like, this printer is actually pretty old. And hopefully I can get it to work right. Um, put the picture on there. And it does this cool thing where it, well, as long as I don't break it. Um, then we're going to hit the... Scan. Um, I can't remember how I did this last time. Nope, that's not it. Okay, give me just a second to figure this out. Success. We come over here and hit the scan button. And then it will hopefully come over onto here. Maybe. There it comes. Slowly, slowly. Getting there. I'm still figuring out my editing software, so maybe I can fast forward through this part so it's not just me holding my phone somewhat shakily. There it is. Yay, it worked. Okay, I'm gonna go take that out of the printer and then we will come back over here and I'll show you how I work on this. All right, so we're back over here to this screen. Going to save it, going to save it. Sorry for the glare, camera roll. I think it saved it. We'll go look. Oh yes, there it is right there. So then from here, obviously if you want to edit it a little bit, I'm going to just do the auto, brighten it up a little bit. Fantastic. I like it. All right. So there we go. Saved, edited. Then we're going to go back over here to the Epson. We're going to go back, we're going to go home, print photos, recents. Okay, we're going to click select, next. So very important, under the settings on your printer, you're going to want to choose ultra premium photo paper glossy. It's already selected. I have an eight and a half by 11. It's actually like eight and a quarter by 11 and a half, I, kind of an odd size, but anyway, so we're just going to, this is where you resize it. 
so you can take it and make it a little smaller. Um, I need to measure the cup really quick and I need both hands. So give me a minute and I will measure it. We can Being figure it on it. The cup is 11 inches around at the top. So we're gonna basically print the whole page, which is gonna use a lot of ink, but hopefully it should be worth it. Um, you're gonna put the paper in. I usually only load one at a time and you're gonna load it where it prints on the glossy side of the paper. I'm not sure if you can really tell the difference in the video, but the, the back side is very matte and a little rougher. The glossy side is very nice and smooth. You, when you hold it in your hand, you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, there's several different brands that you can get. There's a brand at Michael's, the We Are Memory Keepers kind, and it's not terrible. I just, I like this brand. It seems like it holds the picture, the ink, the lines stay nice and sharp. So the one thing that you need to consider when you do an image, especially a big image, is, is it gonna be pixelated? If you see here on my camo cup, the image is a little bit pixelated, but I'm not super great with graphics and I just like it. That one is personal use as well. So it worked out pretty good. If you obviously make the image smaller, it will turn out not so pixelated and it'll look really good. I'll try and get another picture I did of one for a customer that had water slide and then I did a layer of epoxy and then I did a wood grain over the top. and. Anyway, you'll see it if I can get a picture in there. So anyway, we're ready to print. I've got some paper in the printer already. We're just gonna click print. And I'm not going to subject you to sitting here while it prints because it does take a while. Even as old as the printer is, it prints pretty high quality pictures. So I'm gonna let that print and I'm gonna do a couple other little things and then we'll be back when it's ready. Okay. Here it is printed. Got a little bit of fuzz on it there. Um, so my printer, beings is how my printer is seven years old. Sometimes it doesn't do so great on the edges, but it's okay because we're probably actually gonna wind up cutting a little bit off. This stuff does have a little bit of stretch to it once you get it on the cup. So you'll be able to see that when we get it on there. Also, the colors aren't quite as vibrant as they are on the actual painting. But all in all, it does fairly well. And that could just be my printer. Um, like I said, it's seven years old. It sat in my mom's garage for about a year before I took it. But it was free, free to me. Works great. Um, so the next step is we're going to seal it. Seal it three times. I like to spray coat on hit it with the heat gun, dry it out pretty fast, and then just do that two more times. Um, you're supposed to let it sit for about three minutes after you print it, that's according to their directions. So I'll just let it sit, hang out, try and keep the dang kids and the dogs and the freaking cat away from it. And so this is, it's been about three minutes since it's printed. So I'm gonna go ahead, get the three coats on it, and then we'll pick up after that. So just be sure that it's dry before, <laughs> before you try and seal it or put it on the cup. Cause if you put it on the cup, it's gonna be a big sticky mess. So we'll be back in just a few. All right, so got the three coats on. It's nice and shiny. I don't know if you can see. It's dry to the touch. Ooh, well, mostly. There's a couple little spots in there that are still a little sticky. So then you cut around the image obviously we don't need the whole thing and that's the cool thing about this you don't have to be perfect um morgan anyway playing video games so the cool thing is you don't have to be perfect I know you could do the print to cut option with your Cricut if you wanted to, but it's really, really not necessary. Uh, I, on the white though, I think you would want to be very close because 
it will leave a white edge on a dark background. But we're doing clear so we don't really have to worry about it. Um, I've got my cup primed. You can see I've got a fingerprint in it and a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's just gonna get covered up with the water slide. You won't even be able to see that. So pretty sure I want that at the top. Crap on there. And I'm just kinda seeing where I'm gonna wanna place it once I get it off the backing. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. I'm excited to see it. So then let me get a thing of water and then we'll continue. All right. Here we go. Got my handy dandy pan of water. If you're doing smaller images, just a little bowl, whatever. But you definitely want the whole thing to be covered in water. Otherwise you're gonna have part of it stuck and you can tear it and so just place it in the water. It'll curl up. I've not had it curl up so bad that it like sticks to itself or anything like that. I just kind of, so I'm gonna get where you can see, just kind of hold it down in the water so that it all, those little edges don't poke out. Stay down. Okay. Now yeah, maybe we should put some rocks on it. Some concrete boots for it. For the mafia around here. It's like that meme, I'm gonna blow glitter in your eye. Trust me, there's enough glitter in my kitchen that would the strip club would be jealous of it all. I think glitter cups are the bane of my existence. Although they turn out so pretty when they're done. They're just terrible. It's not so bad when you can mix the glitter into the epoxy, but like it's just not quite the same, is it, as when you do the whole glue it on. Okay, so after a few seconds it'll stay down. So smaller images don't take as long in the water as the big images. Um, I'm going to definitely let this sit for at least a full minute. I've left them in there for longer, like I've had... I was doing some piece work and I just left them sitting in the water and it didn't seem like it hurt it. I suppose if you left it in for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, it would not be good. But I, I don't even think, you know, four or five minutes would hurt it in any case. So you can kind of test and see if it's ready. You can kind of peel up the corner and see. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it slides. Um, it's a lot like those temporary tattoos. I used to get them in a bubble gum that they sold around here. I'm sure probably all of us that are in our 30s know about it. Um, and then they were like really terrible to get off. <laughs> I remember it was, it was a Saturday before Easter and I'd gone to my little friend's house. We got a bunch of that bubble gum and stuck those tattoos all over our arms. My mom was horrified and of course now I'm covered in real tattoos and she's just as horrified. Don't worry. These ones don't come off with rubbing alcohol. All right. So let me see if I can move this a little closer so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The corners are kind of curling up. That means it's ready. Yay. Now comes the part that I always, <laughs> excuse, excuse me, um, you're going to get wet. I'm not trying to be inappropriate <laughs> here. Sorry, i got the mentality of a 13-year-old boy sometimes. So, you've got your cup. I'm just trying to get through this where you can see everything I'm doing. It's kind of hard when I don't have somebody to watch the screen. My children have abandoned me in my YouTube channel. I'm not cool anymore. Okay. So, you can get the cup wet. And I usually just do something like that. I'll even just rub a little bit. <laughs> rub some, put some water on it. All right. So, just, all right, so you can kind of see. All right, and then it just slides off. Easy peasy. 
and it'll stick and it'll wrinkle but don't worry we can reposition it it's not like stickers that are just stuck down as soon as you touch the cup it's very very nice to work with you see how that just rolls off okay now look see it's a little wonky it's fine because we're gonna reposition it and you can do this several times as long as you keep it wet. Once it starts to dry, it will start to get tacky and it will tear if you're not careful. Okay. We're just gonna get it into an approximation of where we want it. We definitely wanna get this pulled so it stretches a little bit and touches. That's why I really like these uh, paint pours because even if you stretch them a little bit, bah, nobody's really gonna notice. All right, so we're gonna peel that back a little. Okay. Where am I? Here we go. Peel it, stretch it so that it, and you can pull it down, pull it down. Pull it up. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. Just... All right, I'm going to pull this back this way a little bit more. Don't pull too hard or you will rip it. I mean, they do. They do wrap. They rip. They'll crack if you're not careful. So. A damp rag is your best friend with these. Just get it a little tiny bit wet and that you can rub all of the bubbles and the extra water out from under it. Okay. Pull this down to see if it's touching yet. Oh, just about. We'll stretch it a little. Okay. Oh, see it too hard and I ripped it but not any important parts so that's good pull it just a little bit more on that side so the cups that aren't straight up and down obviously you're gonna have to work with them a little bit um, these built ones that I get from Walmart they're straight up and down it's super super simple super easy all right so we've got the wet rag and we're just Smoothing out the wrinkles now. And getting the bubbles out. And like I said, as long as you keep this wet, you can keep working with it. Again, not trying <laughs> to make this any kind of a dirty video. Please excuse my giggles. <laughs> Get that bubble out. Oh, see, and you'll have to kind of keep coming back to here and pulling. Oh, well, there. See, now I've done it. Which it's fine because there's extra. This is why I make them a little extra. And honestly, one tiny little white spot probably will go unnoticed, but. I know lots of people are super perfectionists and that one tiny little white spot would drive them crazy. Okay. Stay. All right. I think I got it. Oh, I'm sorry if you couldn't see that. Okay. Good. You're gonna have to kind of keep repositioning this until it starts to dry. Because it will, it does move a little bit on its own. Okay. And now here's the hard part, for me at least. I'm sure there's some people who are way better at it. And if I had a sharp razor blade, it would actually be super easy but I don't mine are all dull because I've done them things with them like 
cutting zip ties. We did the parade of lights over the Christmas with the semi truck and I didn't want to use my good craft scissors to cut the lights, well, the zip ties that we had on. So I used my little cheap razor blade from Harbor Freight here and now it's dull, very, very dull. So, just gonna keep going around and making sure Are you sneaking? Pretty sure that everybody doesn't care if they hear your footsteps there, brother. Okay. So you're gonna have a little bit of an overlap. That's just the way it is. Unless, I'm sure that there's a some way I could get it where it would print exact dimensions. I'm not that technologically savvy. I'm not super good even at making videos because I kind of get out of focus and yeah I know well I asked you to help and you wouldn't so don't critique my videos okay uh, that dang gap oh no no I'm ripping it Are we going to drive the semi truck? Sorry. My son, my oldest son, plays the bagpipes and Sunday is bagpipe practice and unfortunately my mother is out of town, hence why I have her fur children that she likes better than she likes her own children, but don't we all? <laughs> and I, like I said earlier, I only have the semi truck, so I can't really drive him to practice. These scissors are crap. So I will attempt with the big scissors to cut up the seam here, whatever you want to call it. And it is going to start getting a little sticky as it dries, so you just got to be careful that it doesn't stick back to itself and try and make a straight line as possible. I'm not doing a very good job. I'm really, really terrible at these tutorials. You guys should not take my advice. Seriously, just don't. Yours are gonna wind up looking all wonky like mine. But, so you just kind of pull it up. You can see kind of where you folded it over. Hope you can see this in the video because this is kind of a one-shot thing. I cannot do a retake. Okay, it's not perfect, but as close to perfect as I'm going to be able to get it. There's a small wrinkle right there. Okay, pull that back, pull that back, pull that up, pull that up. Yes, I can Okay, pull this wrinkle out. And there you go. One acrylic pour wrapped tumbler. Cool. So we've got this top to deal with, but I let it dry before I mess with it. It's easier to cut when it's dry versus when it's wet. It'll stretch when it's wet. You can see that. When it's dry, it's kind of crispy and like really thin plastic, but not like saran wrap that's stretchy. So here in about mm, half hour or so, I'll trim the top and then that'll be kind of the finish of it. You let it dry. Obviously, we let this one dry for a day or two before we put any epoxy on it because obviously you've been working in the water. There's water everywhere. Water all over the counter. Well, I've got this bubble I gotta deal with. What cloth. So even after it kind of starts getting a little tacky, as long as you use something wet, you can use paper towels, you don't have to use a rag. I just like to prefer to use these because I'm always afraid that paper towels are gonna leave lint. 
stuck to it and then I'll be upset. Okay, there's a few little wrinkles here. And let me, Ooh, and you gotta be careful once it starts getting like this when you, when you, where you hold it. And if you're pushing on it too hard, you'll actually wrinkle it where you're holding it as well. So you just gotta kinda be gentle with it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll cut the top off and it'll be basically ready to go. All right, so now it's all dried, kinda crispy. This is good and stuck down so we're not gonna hurt it by touching it. I will take my dull razor because I'm not smart. And we'll start at the bottom because I can kind of fold that over. And I just kind of run it along the edge. water under there. Okay, got it off the bottom edge, turn her over, start there, and then just right along the top edge. It cuts super easy, even with a dull razor blade. And that is how you wrap a cup, water slide. Now, while I was waiting for this to dry, my sister-in-law came over and was telling me about templates that you can put into the Cricut program and cut out whatever size you need and then to make it like a stencil so it would be perfect and you don't have these really horrible join up lines that I do. I'm sure people probably do them better than me. But this one again is probably just gonna be for my personal use. But I thought the template is really cool, so I just jumped on Pinterest and typed in Tumblr template, and there were tons of them for all different brands of cups. You know, some of the cups that have the bigger on the top and smaller on the bottom, the curved cups, all of that kind of stuff. So that's probably the way to go with these, honestly. But I didn't do that this time because it was already pretty much done when she got here. So, then, like I said, we're gonna let this dry for a few days, at least, at least 24 hours, I would say. Because again, we do not want moisture under the epoxy. Just don't do it. I've never seen mold under it, but I've heard horror stories and it's one of the, maybe it's an urban legend, but I don't wanna find out. So, um, the bottom, you could maybe do another small, it, print it smaller and put it on there. Um, I just painted this bottom of this other one turquoise because I thought it looked okay. And then that's it. If you guys were just doing a smaller picture, it's a lot easier, obviously, than wrapping it is. And it's all the same process. Print it out, seal it cut around the picture you want to put on there and slap it on. I'm going to try and get some pictures of the other ones in there that 
have just the smaller instead of the whole thing. I'll figure it out, maybe, if I can edit it well enough. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment or inbox me and I will try and answer them as best as I can. And I hope this was helpful and you guys learned something from it. <laughs> so until next time, Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm really not good at the outro part. So anyhow, you all take care.